Seven-year-old Fred steps into a college classroom for the first time and is met with dislike. His classmates watch him sit down and then pack up their textbooks and leave the classroom to express their displeasure at being classmates with him. Looking at the empty classroom in a few seconds, Fred has a faint sense of loss, but he doesn't let that deter him, and chooses to study hard instead, crushing his teenage classmates with his strength. As expected, a few days later, Fred, the only one who can understand the physics class, becomes the most popular person in the class, and everyone rushes to copy his homework. Nevertheless, Fred is still lonely in life, and no one understands him and wants to be his friend. He can only learn by himself every day, holding a thick specialized book. On this day, Fred walks on his way out of school and suddenly gets hit on the head by a globe falling from the sky and faints, thus meeting a good friend, Eddie, who doesn't mind his young age. In order to make up for his mistake, Eddie not only gives Fred a globe, but also takes him for a ride on his bicycle to experience the rich after-school life of college students. From the piano room to the pool room, Fred seems to be in a new world, a realm that is alien to him. Longing for friendship, the boy listens attentively to Eddie's introduction of the rules of the game and observes the trajectory of the ball, just to better integrate into his life and have a real friend. That day, Fred rings the doorbell of Eddie's dormitory with a cue stick on his back, ready to practice the game of pool with him, but he is blocked by Eddie's roommate. But Fred is a very principled boy, and what is agreed upon must be done, so he crosses Eddie's roommate and unscrews the lock on Eddie's room. Eddie, who is annoyed at being interrupted on a date with his girlfriend, sternly berates Fred. Fred is angry too. It's Eddie who doesn't keep the appointment. Who is he to lose his temper? Then he left Eddie's dormitory in a huff. Fred's confusion stems from a lack of understanding of society's rules. It starts with his mother's strategy of educating him. In his mother's mindset, Fred just needs to be happy and be a carefree child. Fred is actually a super genius with a memory from birth. He clearly remembers the day he was born, when his mother was lying on the hospital bed and received him from the nurse with joy. And this extraordinary intelligence becomes more and more prominent as he grows. Fred first speaks when he is seven to eight months old, trying to avoid the baby food that his mother feeds him. Dee Dee is amused by Fred's wit as she tries to convince him to continue eating, but then she accidentally discovers the words printed on the bottom of the plate, which happened to be the first word Fred said, coffer. She realizes that Fred is a genius, but as an ordinary person at the bottom of the social ladder, Dee Dee doesn't have enough insight and ability to understand and help Fred get a better education, and the only thing she can do is to let him grow up carefree. So even though their lives are not rich, Dee Dee still finds time to spend with Ferd as he grows up. The handrail of the bus or the open balcony of the house are all good places to exchange mother and son's feelings. But more often than not, Dee Dee behaves like a playful child, while the quiet Fred is more like an adult. But for a genius, love is not enough. As time goes by, the disadvantages of high IQ begin to affect Fred, the brunt of which is his life at school. Because of his intelligence gap, Fred can't find friends who can understand what he's thinking, and he can't fit in with the general population. During recess, when the other students gather to play, Fred stays alone in an unnoticed corner, lying on the floor and drawing with chalk. In just a few minutes, a realistic portrait is completed. In the time afterward, Fred stares enviously at Nemo, the most popular boy in the class. Why do his classmates always want to eat lunch with Nemo? Fred tries to find out the reason for their differences through observation. His thinking is interrupted by the class bell, listening to the teacher talk about simple and boring first grade knowledge. Fred slumps over his desk and drifts off to sleep. He is only interested in further mathematics, celestial mechanics, and high science etc. He is often found at home holding a thick math book in his hands, fascinated by it. That day, when he goes to pick up the newspaper, he accidentally finds a letter of invitation from Dr. Jane. Dr. Jane is the principal and psychologist of the School for the Gifted, who is dedicated to unearthing and nurturing geniuses. On this day her assistant brings in some more genius information. There is Joseph, a business genius who joined the headquarters of Tokyo Electric at the age of 12, and Cherry, who published a book of feminist and egalitarian poetry at the age of 10. But the genius that intrigues Dr. Jane the most is Fred, who is only seven years old and is great in literature, science, and the arts. This genius from a commoner's family is the real genius, and there is no possibility of any artificial molding. Dr. Jane wants to know more about Fred, but is told that his mother refuses to allow him to take any tests on his IQ. While angry at Dee Dee's ignorance, Dr. Jane doesn't want to miss the opportunity to study and nurture Fred, so she personally writes a heartfelt letter of invitation, sincerely inviting them to visit the school. Fred reads Dr. Jane's letter and is intrigued by her depiction of a school for the gifted, so he tries to talk to his mother about visiting this school together. Dear can't resist her son's eager eyes and finally agrees to his request. 
Upon entering the school, Fred is taken to the office for a private meeting with Dr. Jane. In the course of the conversation, Dr. Jane examines the quiet boy in multiple dimensions and identifies Fred's unusual side from his keen reaction to numbers, space, and colors. Above all, Fred has the lonely quality of a genius. When Dee Dee follows the sound of the piano to the room, she sees an unusually harmonious scene. Fred is playing the piano while another man listens intently to him. It turns out that her son actually likes the piano and can play it so well, without her knowing anything about it. While Dee Dee is lost in thought, Dr. Jane opens her eyes and tells Dee Dee that she wants to invite Fred to a three-week summer camp called Odyssey Mind. Simply put, it's an intellectual competition that centers around a group of geniuses, and the winner gets more and better learning resources. This goes against Dee Dee's philosophy of education. She just wants her son to grow up healthy and happy like any normal child. So she takes Fred and leaves the place without looking back. Immediately after, Dee Dee starts to prepare for the birthday party with Fred. They go shopping for many materials and hand make birthday cards to invite his classmates. Looking downstairs at his playful classmates, Fred exudes a look of envy, learning to fit in with his peer group, as his mother expected, might be a good choice. So Fred broke down the barriers and took the initiative to invite them to a birthday party. But they take his card, just casually look at it, and throw it on the floor again. Fred's heart is trampled raw at this moment. He doesn't know what he did wrong, and he doesn't know what to do about it. On the day of his birthday, mother and son wait from day to night, and none of the children attend Fred's birthday party. During the night, Fred suffers from nightmares again. It's the price of being a genius, nightmares that haunt you and no friends. Hearing her son's panicked cries, Dee Dee rushes to his side. She thinks long and hard with her head on her pillow and finally has to admit the fact that Fred is different from the other kids and that he can't live like a normal person. The next day, Dee Dee calls Dr. Jane's number and personally puts Fred on the bus to the summer camp. As she watches the car in the distance, Dee Dee tries to lift the corners of her mouth into a smile, but tears blur her vision before she can. Fred cowers in a corner, silently observing the four other young geniuses in the car, gradually forgetting his reluctance to part with his mother. One of them, a boy in a black cape, is a math prodigy whom Fred adores, and the first stop of the summer camp is a national Olympiad competition that concerns him. Fred sits down on the stage and watches the competition attentively. In the beginning rounds, the math prodigy easily cruises through, and the other contestants can't even grab a chance to answer the questions. The prodigy even begins to provoke the organizers, saying bluntly, give me a challenge. In order to save face, the organizers really gave a math problem that is extremely difficult to calculate. While the math prodigy is racking his brain, Fred already has an answer. The numbers in Fred's head are automatically arranged and combined according to the requirements of the question, and he calculates the answer one step ahead of the math prodigy. 24 out of Fred's mouth shocks everyone at the scene, and while everyone applauds, the math prodigy is the only one who looks at him with indignation face. Fred becomes the center of attention and is officially invited by the organizer to take part in the competition. No matter how difficult the questions are given by the host, Fred is able to give the correct answers immediately. With enthusiastic applause, Fred feels the joy of being a genius for the first time, which is a sense of achievement that ordinary schools cannot give him. During the days of the camp, Fred finds out what he wants. After the race, Dr. Jane takes them on another tour of the farm her father left her. Even better, there is a horseback riding farm. Fred, who has never touched a horse before, offers to learn how to ride with the math prodigy in order to become his friend, so a small horse and a big horse carry them deep into the forest. For some unknown reason, the math prodigy slaps Fred's horse on the butt. Like a gust of wind, the frightened horse carries Fred on a wild gallop, with the math prodigy following closely behind, gaining speed. The boy, who is having so much fun, doesn't notice the tree branch in front of him, and accidentally gets hooked by the neck and falls off the horse. When the math prodigy reopens his eyes, his IQ has become no different from that of an ordinary person. The trip to summer camp is interrupted, and Fred returns to an environment that makes him uncomfortable. Having seen the world of geniuses, will Fred choose to return to his normal life? Stay tuned for the next episode.